Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. It is time again for Tip Tuesday. And I'm so excited as I am every week to have my good friend and Southern Inspirations, Paige Shepherd with Shepherd Organizing Solutions. Hey Paige. Hello. <laughs> okay, so you know me, I'm just, I just, I'm real, I'm transparent. I, <laughs> admit my own goofball thing so i popped up the banner with d champ eats when it was time to go live instead of shepherd organizing solutions like ding 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 every week i'm like i'm so glad i have you in my life because <laughs> you have to keep me in order and like i get on here ahead of time we just prep everything before i hit the go live button and Paige, it's almost like when it's time to go live, all that just flies out the window. Like, you never know what I'm going to do, right? <laughs> I, I kind of like that a little bit, you know, just be prepared for everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I call that grace, and you seem to give me a lot of it. So. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pause for just a second, and I'm going to put up our correct banner. I do believe it is that one. <laughs> Um, so welcome everybody to another episode of Tip Tuesday. And today, speaking of good organizing tips and tricks and best practices, let me see if I can find some paper over here. We're going to talk about paper clutter. Now, luckily, I just picked up the legal pad, you know, um, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about stuff that just seems to pile up. Right, Paige? Yeah. For some people, like paper clutter just stacks up and some people think they have it under control, but they just have like, I don't know, 85 stacks of paper around their house. No, I don't, I'm not that bad, but I know it can, it can get out of hand like pretty quick, right? It can. And sometimes people will stack things in their office or in a workspace, but sometimes it just takes over like your main living area, your kitchen, your dining room, your, your kitchen island, you know, and that's not appealing to you when you walk in your own home and you see stacks of paper everywhere. It's not, it does not create a refreshing or relaxing <laughs> space. <laughs> no. <laughs> so so yeah. we're going to walk through some steps and how to kind of get rid of that, cut, cut down on that and be more efficient with our paper. Yes. And I could honestly, this topic is never ending because everyone has different kinds of papers and stuff like that. So this is not all encompassing because we only have a few minutes. Um, but <laughs> Michelle was joking with me earlier. You know, the first step is always to declutter. You know, I don't know why I take it out of the notes in, in this <laughs> software that I use for our streaming. Why do I even remove it each week? Because I know that's going to be step one. So, so step one. Yes, I actually um, this is kind of a continuation of a topic that I talked about um, back in January when I wrote blogs about decluttering different areas. And I wrote a very detailed blog about decluttering paper. Um, and again, when we when this gets posted, I will put the link to that old blog in the comments so that you can read it. Um, I'm not going to talk about that today because again, everyone's paper looks different, but basically don't keep things you don't need and don't get rid of things you do need. <laughs> so oh, how simple is that? If we would just follow it every day. I know, but it, I really did go into much more detail about that and specific things that you should keep together uh, for easy access, things that you're holding on to that you don't need anymore. So that I will post that blog on there. Um, but the second tip, these four tips, the next four things I'm going to give you are. Okay. <laughs> I'm giving it away too soon. <laughs> The next four things I'm going to give you are things that you could do today. You could really be intentional and see a quick difference. The first one is to choose the paperless option when you can. So I guess that's number two. Yeah, choose the paperless option. You can do that today. You can call your bank today. You can go to websites or call the businesses that send you bills and ask to get that shifted over to paperless. 
Now that's only if that is the method you prefer. If you're paying your bills online already, I see no reason that you should be getting, you know what I mean? If you're tracking that yeah. stuff already, you don't need a paper copy. But if that's something that you would prefer to only do by paper, that's your personal preference. But I think that will make a big difference. Companies that are billing you and your bank statements and your credit card statements and all that stuff. If you can go paperless, that is one way to save on paper clutter. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think probably most organizations these days prefer that their customers and clients go paperless as well. It, green is best for all of us. Yeah, there are numerous reasons, you know, um, to to do that. But if you if we're just talking strictly about clutter level today, that will help cut down. <laughs> yes. Awesome. I love it. Good tip. OK, the third one is unsubscribe. And I think that this takes some time, but it is so worth it. So when something comes in the mail or comes through your door or is delivered to your house that you no longer need to receive by mail anymore, you either, if you have time right then to look on the back or Google that website and go to the customer service options or your account options and update your mailing preferences, if you can do it right then and unsubscribe, that is the best thing. And then put in the trash or recycle it immediately. Don't just be like, oh, I don't need this and lay on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> I might need it one more day. <laughs> okay. um, but I know that's not really realistic. Sometimes you get the mail late at the end of the day or, you know, you let it build up in the mailbox for a few days and you got to bring it in. So if that's the case, if you find things that you need to unsubscribe from, but you don't have time to do it right away, make a stack. I'm allowing a stack here. <laughs> make a stack, but intentionally carve out time on Saturday or a Sunday afternoon. Put it on your calendar so that you spend time going through that stack and making those phone calls or sending the email or clicking the options, whatever it is to unsubscribe. Yeah. And once you've done that, that's the step that you may not see immediate results from. But over time, that makes a big difference. So sometimes like I get just last week, I unsubscribed from a company I ordered shoes from back in like 2014. I ordered shoes from them one time and I occasionally get mail from them. I don't need that because I yeah. bought the shoes online. <laughs> and so <laughs> anyways, so unsubscribing is a good way to cut down on paper clutter. Hey, before we um, go to number four and five, I okay. want to jump over to our comments. Sure. Um, and I'm going to show Holly. Thank you so much for joining. She's saying good morning and she can't wait for some amazing tips. And then Joyce, y'all know I need to get rid of some paper. <laughs> so Joyce is a realtor in Oxford, Mississippi. And I know there's tons of paperwork um, with being a realtor, but Joyce, I know that you can for sure utilize some of these tips, even in that, even in your business. Yes. And if there's something that we don't talk about today, again, go back and check out that blog I wrote in January on my website. I, I have a search bar on my blog page, so you can just type paper and everything I've ever written about paper will come up. <laughs> uh, and I'll put the website up um, toward the end of the broadcast just to remind people. OK, great. OK, well, thank you guys for watching. OK, here are the last two tips. Um, a lot of people have stacks or drawers or cabinets full of old magazines and old catalogs. Um, if that's you and you need to get rid of them, then do it. So you can recycle or trash them however you prefer. Um, this is now some people save magazines. I understand for different reasons. And that's if that's you. I'm not talking to you unless you, you know, have a problem. <laughs> If you have magazines and catalogs that have dust on them, like oh, you haven't looked at them in that long, it's past time for them to go. And you can go ahead and chunk them. If you're still paying for it and you're not reading it, oh. save yourself some money. Again, you can unsubscribe from those things. So it gives you one less thing to dust, one less thing to shove in a cabinet somewhere. Get rid of it and free up that space. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Another good one. 
Okay, the last one is to develop a filing system that works for you. Develop a filing system of things that you need to keep. And then here's the kicker, actually file the thing. <laughs> oh! <laughs> In the filing system. <laughs> I know that that seems silly and I'm not trying to poke fun, but we all struggle with that. We're like, oh, we'll get to it later. I'll just throw this on top of the filing cabinet or put this in this basket. And then out of sight, out of mind, something more pressing than filing papers comes up. Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we, it just doesn't happen. And then you need to find something and you can't find it because it's in a stack instead of in the file folder. So I sent some pictures over to Michelle this morning of a simple way if you don't think you need a full file cabinet, so go ahead and pop that bin. Stay here. Let me find it. There it is. Yeah. So this is um, a bin. I honestly, I've had it for several years. I had it in my office at the church, and I can't remember if I purchased it from Target or the Container Store, but it has a lid and it's sturdy. Um, and inside of the bin, you can go ahead and show that, Michelle. I have put a hanging filing system, one of the adjustable ones. So it didn't come in that bin, but I chose the size. I adjusted the sides, the length <laughs> to fit that bin, inserted it. And then I have my hanging file folders there. And obviously I have them labeled, but I turned that around because y'all don't need to see all that. But um, I have different file folders for things that we need to keep, whether it's stuff related to our cars or to taxes or to health things. It just depends on where you are in your family and what things are important for you to keep. Um, this is a very simple way to file things without having a huge filing cabinet. And on my shelf, go back to the other picture, Michelle, if you don't mind. It just looks like a cute little bin. So it's it's an easy way to file things. For some people, you have a larger family, you have more medical things, you have more cars, you have more history in your taxes, whatever it is, you may need something bigger. But this is a simple way um, to kind of get that under control and it can fit in most spaces. So that's the last one. Everyone's filing systems look different. Um, if you are disposing of papers with personal information on there, make sure you do that safely, either by shredding or whatever you see fit. But, you know, you don't want information with your private, your private information just to be out anywhere for anyone to pick up. So keep that in mind. Um, and if you start, after you've read the blogs, if you start this process and it's just too much, call me. I want to help. <laughs> That's a good time for me to pop your website up there. So let me scroll up to that real quick. Shepherdorganizing.com. And like you've mentioned a couple of times, um, the blog content is there all about decluttering and much, much more. And so beyond this episode, we invite you all to visit Paige's website and browse around, read a little bit, pick up some of her more detailed tips. And as she mentioned, if you still need help beyond that, then reach out to her and schedule a virtual consultation. Um, she can do it just like this from the comfort of your own home. You can show her all your mess and she will help you. I'm going to make up a word, unmess it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Which more, I guess, correctly said, get it organized, become more efficient and productive in your home or your office, as the case may be. Um, what else do we want to tell them today? I don't know. That's all I've got. Pretty short and sweet today. All right. Uh, well, y'all, I know you see the ticker on the bottom of the screen. screen. That is a reminder to, if you are not already a member of the home base. Facebook group. Uh, you, that's where you may be watching from now. And if so, that's great. But if you aren't, be sure and join that. You can go to the main Southern Inspirations page and scroll down to groups and just type in home base and it should come up and share, share, share. Um, myself and Paige and Kelly Colettis, the other partner, we are trying to grow this home base group. We want uh, lots of folks to have access to this content, which reminds me, we have a question that we ask you every single week, and that is, what other content do you want to see? Um, if it's related to 
organization and productivity and um, event planning and anything like that that's in Paige's wheelhouse. And then Kelly, of course, has content that's all about home decor, design, interior, exterior, remodeling, all of those, picking colors and rugs. And um, we're just covering the full gamut, right? <laughs> um, so that's my plug for the home-based Facebook group. If you aren't already a member, join. If you are a member, go invite somebody else. Um, all right. Let me see here what else we have here. Um, all righty. Joyce said, thank you so much for, um, the information. Thanks. Thanks for the, for the great information. So I don't see anything else right now. All right, y'all. That's it. Thank you again for watching and, um, for following Southern Inspirations and Shepherd Organizing Solutions. We appreciate you and we'll see you right here next week. Same time, 11 o'clock central. Bye y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day.